Hello, I'm Kyle Pratchett from Shopper Motorsports, and today I want to introduce to you a brand new helmet from HJC. This is going to be the i10 helmet, and it's replacing the world-renowned CL17. The CL17 was a top seller for Shopper Motorsports for lots of years, and I have no doubt in my mind that this new i10 helmet from HJC is going to take its place. This is an entry-level helmet starting at about $149, going up to about $159, depending on the style of color graphic or finish that you choose. But this helmet packs some really nice features for that entry-level, very affordable price point. So we're gonna run you through some of the features and benefits of this helmet, and then we're gonna dig into the guts of the helmet so you can see just exactly what's on the inside of this i10 helmet. Now, before we dig into the intricate details of the helmet, let's talk a little bit about some of the highlight bullet points. So the polycarbonate composite nature of this helmet allows it to be strong, light, durable, and it allows them to get a superior fit for that entry level price point. That multi-density liner is gonna allow this helmet to absorb impacts at different speeds. So slow speed impacts are gonna be absorbed well, as well as high speed impacts. The next bullet point is going to be ventilation. They've done a good job at allowing this helmet to be able to accept wind and air on the front, allowing a venturi effect towards the back that's going to be able to take warm, moist air and suck it out of the helmet. That is something that they tout that they do better than a lot of the other entry-level helmets out there in the marketplace. Moving to the interior of the helmet, we have a super cool moisture wicking liner. Now, HJC is Pinlock Anti-Fog Lens that goes on the inside of the helmet. So these two pins on the side are going to allow you to install basically a, a dual pane on the inside of this helmet that completely eliminates fogging. That additional shield is available for purchase separately. So take a look at the link in the description of this video and you'll be able to be directed directly to that anti-fog system. Now this vent here in the front, this chin vent, actually has channels that go up and put air directly onto the inside of this face shield. That helps to prevent fogging. As far as helmet closure goes, we're looking at a double D-ring setup. This is a very, very tried and true way to attach this helmet to your head. If there was one more bullet point that I want to point out, this is Smart HJC Ready. So what that means is HJC has their own proprietary made by Cena headset that bolts in. You've got two different styles. You have a 10B and a 20B. So basically you have an SMH10 or a 20S type electronics that are in there. So it accepts it right here. So everything integrates. You're gonna notice that the chin bar when we get in there has a spot cut out for the microphone and, and little indentions for the wires to actually press in. It's a really neat setup. So if you're looking to put Bluetooth into your helmet and you don't already have one already, and you're looking to upgrade to a new helmet, this might be something that you wanna take a look at. Now, let's get into the details. Now, when taking a look at the ventilation of the helmet, which is one thing that I am a stickler on because I hate stuffy helmets, it looks like we have four vents, or if you wanna break it down, how a lot of helmet manufacturers do it, it actually has eight vents because you can count every hole of the ventilation system. Here at the chin, we have one, two, three, four here at the bottom. Now these really are four different vents that have different purposes. You've got the bottom here too that are gonna go straight into the helmet and the top two here are going to be vented up onto the backside of the shield to prevent fogging. Now, I would call this a single vent because it literally has one opening. It's either open or close. Um, but all four of those do kind of go to a different space so I can understand where they're getting four vents out of that one function. Moving up here to the forehead, we have a switch here that opens up two small vents here. These two small vents are going to allow this helmet to, to take air in at the top and that's gonna help pull the bottom air up and in as well. Again, one button slides back and forth that opens two different vents here on top. Now up here on the very top of the helmet, you're gonna find two vents that open up very easily by just sliding your gloved hand over the top. Again, one on each side, left and right side, and that's gonna allow air to channel from the front of the helmet to the back of the helmet and be exhausted out these two different exhaust vents here in the back. Now these exhaust vents do not close, they're always open. Now the reason for that is the air is gonna come up over this helmet and it's gonna flow over the top. Um, you, it creates a venturi effect over here that actually pulls that warm air out here at the bottom. Now, if you have these closed, you're still gonna have these two open in the back, and that's actually gonna allow the helmet to not get stuffy. It's gonna allow it to have this 
ambient air that's always moving around inside the helmet, allowing the helmet to stay fresh on the inside, if you will. And that finishes up with the ventilation of this particular helmet. Now let's take a look at the face shield. The face shield has some very nice indents that come all the way up to the top. You got about seven indents there, so you can choose just the perfect position for this shield in whatever riding type of situation you find yourself in. Now this is a center open. Um, if you close the shield like that, it does lock down nice and easily. You don't have to really force that to lock into place. Now, if you're riding around town and you want just a little bit of ventilation from that shield, you can just pop it open like that, and you're gonna have a slight crack all the way along the bottom. If you're looking for just a little bit more airflow, you can open it up to the first crack. That's actually a quite a big opening there, and that's gonna light up lots of fresh air coming into the helmet. This is gonna be one, two, three, four, five, six. Six different detents on this particular helmet shield. Now while still on topic of the shield, let's take a look at the rapid fire quick release system that this helmet's equipped with. Literally there's a trigger that comes down here on the side plate. We're gonna pull that trigger and that is going to allow this face shield to be removed. It works the same on both sides. You're gonna pull that trigger, wiggle the shield just a little bit and off it comes. Now when it comes to installing the shield, we're simply going to set this back in place in the open position and just put a little pressure there on the side and it locks right into place. Now let's move to the inside of the helmet. We're gonna take a look really quick at the D-ring fastening system. If you're unfamiliar with how a D-ring works, you're basically gonna put your helmet strap through both of the D-rings. You're then gonna open it up, put it through the second one. You're gonna bring the rest of the strap back and snap it just above the D-ring. That's gonna keep that strap from flapping as you're riding down the road. So next you wanna dig into the interior and take a look at what comprises of the comfort liner and cheek pad system or setup that's inside this helmet. Let's reach down in here. There's gonna be one, two, looks like two different snaps. And then there's gonna be a rib that goes down in between the EPS liner and the advanced polycarbonate shell here on the outside. There's two tabs here that help you locate this cheek pad so you get perfect fitment every time. And then again, it looks like one of my snaps was already undone, so there are three different snaps that keep this cheek pad in place. Moving over to the other side. One, two, three. Now this, this side was attached on all three of those as well. Moving up here, we're gonna go ahead and wiggle our flange here or flashing out of those two channels. And now we're going to remove the comfort liner. The comfort liner should be held in place by a couple of the same style snaps here at the bottom. And then here at the top, I don't know if you can see that in there. Here at the top, the comfort liner comes in and snaps into the brow up here, just on the other side of the EPS liner. So we're gonna go ahead and work our way up here and just pull those out gently. And there it is, comfort liner. Now looking inside this helmet, we wanna point a couple things out. The first is the ventilation. So you had the forehead vent and the chimney vents here at the top. You can see that those holes come through to this liner that has a channel that's built all the way from the front to the back where the exhaust vents are gonna help pull that, that warm, moist air out. What we're gonna find here on the inside is an actual docking station for the speaker. The speaker actually snaps into place here instead of just Velcroing into a pocket that has been drilled out of the polystyrene. In addition to that speaker docking location, you're gonna see there is a channel that has been created for that cord or wire to run all the way forward to the chin bar. Now here in the chin bar, you're gonna see a spot for the microphone and for that cord to continue all the way around to the front. All right, now let's try this helmet on. Now I typically wear a size small. This is a size large. It is a 59 to 60 centimeter, so it's gonna be a little bit big, but you'll get the idea. Go ahead and get my glasses on here. Wow, there's lots of room here on the side. So it doesn't matter how thick the arms of your glasses are, you should have no problem with this particular helmet. Let's get the shield closed and give you a 360. 
This helmet feels really good. Has a nice feel on the inside. It feels nice and light. And there you have it, the detailed breakdown of the i10 helmet from HJC. This is gonna be one of the least expensive Snell rated helmets out there in the marketplace. So a helmet that is Snell and DOT rated at just 3.8 pounds, that is anti-fog, has great ventilation, and is communications compatible. I'm Kyle Bradge from Shopper Motorsports. If you like what you saw today with this helmet, please give it a thumbs up. And if you want more action like this coming directly to your inbox, please hit that subscribe button, and more importantly, the notification bell. Until next time, and as always, take care and ride safe out there.